Welcome back everybody. We're gonna be walking you through this rifle that you guys see here and that you saw throughout the intro. I decided to do this one outside because it's relatively cool. It's only like 90 degrees out here tonight and it's not raining, which is that combo is rare for this time of year. So uh, what we have here is basically two major components and then some uh, accessories added on there as well. We have the Howa Model 1500 mini chassis, which is chambered in 7.62 by 3.9. This is our lightweight profile barrel. And then we have the MDT chassis here uh, paired up with it. Um, so basically we're gonna walk you through both of those, but a quick overview on the action because that's kind of the heart and soul of a rifle, right? This one here has a 20 inch lightweight profile, cold hammer forged uh, blued barrel. Whatever bike that is, he's got some loud pipes on. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that. Um, but so cold hammer forged barrel, 20 inches lightweight profile. They also offer a heavy profile if you guys are looking for like maximum precision or if you want to suppress it, because that one there is threaded. Uh, both of those are going to be Brownells exclusives. You're probably going to hear that a few times during this video. Kind of just is what it is. <laughs> um, but the action here has a forged uh, bolt and forged receiver. They are trued together, so the bolt face is trued for the chamber to aid in accuracy. I remember years ago, side note, but it's related to this one, talking to Mark Krebs about how uh, he accurizes the AK. Um, when he builds his rifles and that was one of the things that he said makes a huge difference even with like a factory Sega turning it into a like Krebs custom rifle which tend to get much better accuracy for those of you guys who have watched my reviews here on the channel of those and he said that truing of the bolt really is important so the Howa has that built into it already um, there's definitely more details on the action and the chassis that we'll get into here in just a second but let's step out to the range see how this thing can shoot because I think that's something that's going to be paramount for folks looking at this type of setup. Now we're going to see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this little rig here. 7.62 by 3.9 definitely isn't known for being the most inherently accurate cartridge. That said, uh, so far I've had really good uh, results with this at distance. I haven't benched it yet like we're about to do, so we're about to find out together how it shoots these different loads. But we've been getting uh, hits out to 400 yards and beyond with Wolf, uh, which is what we have up here first. It's the 123 grain full metal jacket stuff, so that alone is promising. Of course the uh, trajectory of the round is crazy, but hey, hits our hits, right? So let's see what we got to do here to rig this up. So the rest that we're using is going to be the CTK precision rest. Ideally you would do this before the cameras start rolling. <laughs> and the scope is going to be the uh, primary arms. This is their 1-8 to eight platinum with the uh, Griffin MOA reticle. Obviously we're gonna go measure that, but uh, it looks pretty decent from here. It kind of backs up what I was saying earlier. This rifle seems to shoot the wolf pretty darn well. Next up, we have some uh, Red Army Standard. So this will be the last uh, steel case load we have here. Red Army Standard is, is the stuff that's made in the Bardanol factory uh, over in Russia. So it's got these sealed uh, neck and primer, 124 grainers. Um, most folks equate it to the Golden Tiger stuff, which is generally highly, highly regarded in the AK world, so we'll see how it shoots out of this rifle. Lightweight barrels getting a little warm there, but that's good. We're gonna reload here. So it'll give it a little bit of time to cool off. Um, we have here some Winchester PDX-1 Defender. So nickel plated or nickel case stuff rather, I should say. It's kind of some high end hunting defensive ammo for this caliber. I think earlier I said Bernal when I meant to say Vimple, the Vimple plant over there in Russia. So if I said Bernal, I'm off. It's about a hundred something degrees out here and I'm baking. My brain's baking as well. So 
That's my excuse anyway, and I'm standing by it. Uh, we also have some uh, Fiocchi, which is what you guys are seeing here. This stuff is brass case, and it's gonna be 124 grains, so. Got a couple different American offerings here to see if they shoot you better than those steel case ones, but as you guys can see, probably better than I can at this point. Steel case uh, groups aren't too bad. Again, considering this cartridge, uh, it's just not inherently accurate. And then one thing to think about too, is like I was mentioning earlier with the, uh, the hits that we're getting out beyond 400 is the trajectory of this round beyond 300 just drops like crazy. So make sure you get your ballistic calculator and stuff all dialed in if you're gonna try to do that because it starts getting pretty, pretty crazy and drops pretty heavy beyond 300. So let's see how this Winchester load does. Interesting. Last up, we're gonna fire that Fiocchi through it. That barrel's really hot. I'm gonna give it a second here. We're just gonna fast forward, let that barrel cool down a little bit. We've got about 40 seconds to go by there. Hopefully it should be cooled down a touch. Last up's gonna be the Fiocchi load. There we go. Go check them out. We had some interesting point of impact shifts here with this gun. Uh, so pretty much across the board, I was holding one down in terms of the grid, one down on the right hand side from the shooter's perspective. Um, yeah, as you guys can see, that's, that's where this uh, rifle is zeroed with the wolf. And on that group there, center to center, we're right at about an inch and five eighths with that one. Then we came over here with the PDX, or rather with the uh, Red Army Standard, excuse me. And with that one, we're right at about two inches and five eighths on that one. Then we came down here at the PDX one. Again, I was holding here. Uh, we definitely had shifts from the other ones, which is interesting again. Uh, and the group size on that one opened up a touch as well. We're right at about two and a quarter inches on that one. And over here with the Fiocchi, again, I'm holding down here. Totally different point of impact. So definitely make sure you check your... Uh, rifle with your load and that's by far going to be our best group right there with the Fiocchi we're right at about an inch and a half center to center with that Fiocchi load so I've actually seen better results with this than Wolf um, but I would say if you worked up a load for it you can definitely count on an inch and a half might be able even with that lightweight profile to eke out eke out MOA accuracy uh, just depending on how you load and and what your desired end state is for your rifle. Now that you guys have seen how it shot with that ammo, with this guy behind it anyway, uh, we'll get into a few more details here on the action. First off, it does come with bottom metal, which is something that is very good for uh, folks looking for precision. It also comes with a five round magazine. These are polymer magazines and online. Uh, I've seen that there are 10 round mags for this. I did try the 223 10 round mags uh, because they're both fit for the mini chassis. They didn't work. Uh, you could get six rounds in them, but they wouldn't feed right. If you modded the front feed lip on them, it would totally work though, in my opinion. So just kind of giving you a feedback on that if you guys are looking for that. Um, the action here takes Remington 700, I believe, uh, bases. I know I did use the worn one here, and that's what we used. It, they make uh, negative 20 MOA bases, but for 7.62 by 3.9. I didn't really see the point of it, but I'm sure some of you guys would disagree with that, and that's just fine. Um, the safety on this one's pretty cool for those of you guys who are not familiar with the 1500. So of course, forward is going to be your fire position. 
to that point, pull the trigger, it's gonna go bang. And then we have two different positions here. So we have it back one. At this point, you're on safe, but you can still work the bolt. Even though you're on safe, you point the safe direction, pull the trigger, nothing will happen. At this point, we also have a third position where you can pull it all the way to the rear, and that will lock the bolt up completely. You guys can see, I cannot get that bolt to open up. Now, to remove the bolt, of course, we have the bolt release here on the left side of the receiver, and you can pull it out pretty easily for cleaning and maintenance. One thing I will mention on this build uh, versus some other precision rifles out there that I've shot in the past, is that one thing, and I've said it in other reviews as well, that kind of differentiates uh, some of the, how do I want to say, more entry uh, type of bolt guns versus some of the like really high end, like you're talking like $4,000, $5,000 precision ones, is kind of the play here in the rear. Uh, you guys can see that we definitely have some here on this action. Now, does that really affect anything? No, um, <laughs> but it's just something to note when you do put that bolt home and throw the lever down. It's got a nice snug lock up. Like you said earlier, the uh, bolt face is fitted for the chamber and you can feel the very solid lock up there when you go ahead and put the bolt down. Uh, trigger on this gun is a two stage trigger. It's got a 3.5 pound pull from the factory. It's excellent. Um, there's absolutely nothing at all I can say bad about it. It's got sort of a semi curved trigger face. And uh, again, it's got two stage. So there's that first little stage where you pull it and then you have very, very clean, very crisp break. Um, there's really no way, like I said, from the shooter's perspective, that you can be mad about it at all. We covered most of the details there on the action itself. Now moving on to the chassis. Again, this is gonna be a Brownells exclusive. We have the little Brownells logo over here on the right side of the rifle. Uh, chassis is made out of 6061 T6 aluminum. Has M lock slots at the three, six, and nine o'clock position, as you guys can see. It is tapped, so that way, if you guys want to add, you know, a top piece on there to add some night vision or thermal devices, you can do so. It has the capability to do that. Obviously, I didn't do that th throughout this video, but I think a lot of folks with this type of setup, myself included, that really is exactly why I put this together. Was uh, thinking for like a precision ish as obviously um hunting type of rig that's relatively lightweight that has a cheap ammo and you could do some damage on different types of invasive species whether they be coyote hogs whatever the case may be um, and here on the east coast we rarely get hunting shots that are 200 yards or longer really it's very rare that they're even 100 yards so 7.62 by 39 is going to do a good job at putting stuff down at that range in that size of animal anyway so um, again if you wanted to throw those thermals or nods on there you absolutely have the capability to do so we do have a sling swivel or a bipod swivel up front but of course it's mlock so you could add a rail like we did here and uh, i put this caldwell precision this is a fiber optic uh, adjustable tension type of bipod here so you can see when i push this lever i can either rotate it back forward side to side it will swivel like that but when i tighten it down like so it locks up nice and secure. And again, it's carbon fiber, so it's super lightweight. You can extend the legs, but this really isn't a bipod review. <laughs> just, just kind of mentioning that because I think it's the first time it's been seen here on the channel. But again, continuing back, it is designed, the chassis that is, to take the um, factory magazines that come with the action. So it's drop in in terms of that. There's literally two screws that you fit um, that are different from the factory ones. So basically it's gonna come as an action with two how uh, action, how uh, um, chassis bolt screws. Basically the MDT comes with two different ones. You're gonna swap them out, thread them down, and it's installed. And it does have the V bedding in there, so that way we, we maintain our free floater barrel throughout. And uh, really there's no issues from a harmonic standpoint. Any you know accuracy that you guys saw there was either me or the ammo. Uh, that's what I'm gonna say anyway, I'm gonna stand by that. Continuing to move back here on the chassis, there's one thing I want to point out that I would change uh, if I could do it, if I was designing the chassis. And I would put indicators for the safety positions. Now, for people who are really experienced, bolt gun shooters, it's not really a big deal. But, you know, a lot of people like to see the red dead kind of thing for safety. So a little bit of a paint mark or like an indentation, I think, would be kind of a cool option. They do offer this chassis in either black or FDE Cerakote, as you guys see it here. It's the same price uh, regardless. 
at least as of this video anyway. Um, it does take AR grips. That said, it will not take all AR grips. So during this video, you guys may have seen me using the A2, and that's because I didn't have my BCM um, in stock yet. But one thing to keep in mind is it will only take eight uh, AR15 grips that don't have the sort of uh, swell here on the black. So on the back rather. So like your Magpul MOEs will not fit. A lot of the Hogue grips will not fit. So it needs to be, have a flat back strap there where it meets up with the receiver because it's not AR dimension in that regard. Speaking of AR dimensions, it does take your AR extensions. So if you want to use, like we have here, a six position adjustable AR extension, you can do so. Just put the castle nut on there and I loctated it down. It hasn't moved at all. It's been a non-issue. It's super easy to do and it also has a little retention screw here on the bottom that goes into the extension and really locks it in place. Again, I loctited that as well because I'm kind of a loctite addict. For the stock on this one, I went with the Luth AR adjustable carbine length stock. They do make one of these that's sort of like a fixed PRS style that wouldn't go over the entire extension, but this one's adjustable by basically loosening this little piece here, pulling down, and then moving it forward and back. It's kind of awkward to do here, but trust me on that. It's absolutely doable. It's very easy. Um, it's also adjustable in terms of uh, cheek height with the comb, and it's also adjustable length of pull if you want to extend the butt stock here. So, that's why I went with it, because I didn't know how I was going to set this up optics-wise with eye relief and all that stuff. Although I wanted maximum versatility. Um, that said, it's performed flawlessly. It's had no issues. Like I said, it works fine. You can adjust the comb height by basically loosening this up. Then you can, as you guys can see, you can adjust it like that. If you want to adjust the length of pull again, you're going to loosen this, pull it out etc. You can put a monopod here on the bottom. It has the 1913 rails there for it. Um, that said, if I had to do it all over again, I probably wouldn't go with it. Uh, simply because in this setup, the way I, you know, set this rifle up, you just don't need it. Um, using like a Magpul CTR stock with a cheek riser adapter would be perfect for that. Um, but if you guys want to go with this stock, by all means, it's an awesome stock. Um, again, it may just be sort of a little bit more complex of a system than I think you need for this particular setup, but I didn't really know what I was going to get into here uh, when I was, again, ordering the parts to set it up. So uh, I found that really I just kind of raised this up a little bit, probably, again, what a Magpul CTR stock would be if you had the uh, riser on there. And then most of the time I've had it all the way out or, you know, when throwing it in the rifle bag or something like that fully collapsed. So I really didn't need the adjustability of it either um, in terms of the back end. So not a bad stock. It's just if I was, you know, cost and weight conscious, I probably wouldn't go with this again um, on this particular build. It may be good for something else, but I wouldn't do it again on this setup, me personally. Before we wrap the video up, I wanted to touch on the optics that we went with with this. I already mentioned it earlier, but this is the 1-8 to Platinum uh, Primary Arm Scope. It's an awesome scope. This one has the Griffin MOA reticle in there, which obviously works well when you're trying to use a non-AR type of caliber, which this is, so you can just put your solution in and use the MOA uh, reticle to get on target, which we did at distance quite a few times with this um, rig. As you guys have seen throughout the video, it was kind of comical how, uh, how well it shot with this reticle out to distance. But uh, the Seekins Precision's 34 millimeter rings are what we use for this one. Been awesome. Again, Loctite Junkie, Loctite everything down, uh, basic scope mounting stuff, and I have zero issues with it at all. It's an awesome performer. I'm not sure if this is out yet um, for public consumption, if you will, at the time of this video, but if it's not, it'll be out shortly. Um, but we've had this one in for a while now, great scope. The con of it is that it's heavy. So just keep that in mind. So speaking of weight, I know that's one thing people definitely will want to know. The actual um, Howa 1500 Action with bottom metal, magazine loaded, everything comes in at four pounds and three ounces. Then you add in the MDT chassis, which comes in at two pounds and 12 ounces. Again, then you add the extension, the stock, the grip, the rings, the scope, the really lightweight bipod, which really doesn't add much. Um, and this one here on my scale came in just under eight pounds. So it was uh, seven pounds and 14 ounces, I think is what it was. So um, is it super lightweight? No. Um, that said, all of the weight is right here, really. Um, so it balances really, really well. If you're carrying it, like I said, all the weight's right here. 
Um, so in terms of that, there's no issues at all. Of course, you could go with a lighter weight scope. You could go with a lighter weight stock if you guys want to. Lighter weight rings, because these are kind of heavy duty rings as well. If you wanted to lighten the system up, you absolutely could. You could shave at least half a pound off of this uh, relatively easily if you wanted to do so. So um, cost on this varies, guys. Um, you guys know Brown is always running sales. For those of you guys that follow me on Facebook, you guys know that there's coupon codes and stuff that come and go in and out depending on the day. So if you're not following me over there, go ahead and do so. Now, I just totaled up all the different parts. Um, as of right now, when I'm filming this video, what they cost, the prices always can change, guys. Um, but you guys can see the price here as to what it would be for the entire system, not counting the scope, because that's a pretty expensive scope. So we're just gonna kind of leave that out in the mount, uh, the rings rather, I'm, I'm including the, the mount, the worn mount on there. So again, you could save some cost if you wanted to, if you wanted to go with a different stock, if you wanted to go with a different chassis. Uh, there are other chassis systems available for this. Two others that I know of at the time uh, of making this video, and I would imagine there's probably more coming because I think these are going to be popular. Um, but is it a rifle for everyone? Nope, absolutely not. Um, I know some guys are going to say, well, just get an AK. Well, some things to think about. A lot of places, people can't get AKs in America, unfortunately, and overseas as well. Um, and a lot of places won't allow you to hunt with them. Um, this is probably much more hunting friendly than a lot of other rifles out there. And like I said, I kind of view this as like a hog eradication gun. Um, where I live, you guys, as many of you guys are probably in the same situation, hogs are a huge problem. And uh, this thing would drop them relatively inexpensively, pretty darn well at varying distances um, once you get past the initial cost of the setup. So the initial setup is not cheap. But, you know, 7.62 rounds right now as of this video, again, if you guys follow me on Facebook, they're going for 20 cents a round. Shit. Um, so you can, you know, lay some bacon out if you want to with this type of setup and do it pretty effectively um, once you get everything all set up like we have it here. So that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions about this setup, by all means, post down below in the comment section. You can also post over at my previously alluded to Facebook page as always. But thanks for watching guys. Thanks for subscribing. If you like what you saw here and you're not already subscribed, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's gonna help to see all of you in the next video.
not even a little bit mad about that. <laughs>